Blender just released a new array modifier that is inside Blender 5.0 coming soon. You can download the beta version of Blender and give it a go today. And today I'm going to go over the features in this new array modifier, why it's powerful, and also show you some applications to use it in product rendering. So the new array modifier, if you just go add modifier, you go to generate, you look for the array, it's replaced this one here, which is the legacy version of the array. Just click it and apply it. And so this is what it looks like. So it pretty much does the same functionality as the other one and much, much more. So we now have four new shape types. So this is, we're going to go through line first and line is like the original array. It just arrays in a direction that we create. If we select this array, you can see now we have a gizmo that allows us to control the array. So we can grab the arrows, we can spin them, we can scale them, all sorts of things like this. So you can use the gizmo now. And then you've also got this yellow one, which extends the count up the top here. Or you can just adjust it all from here. So what I'm going to do is just show you an example. So we'll go negative one on the offset. We'll go zero here. You've also got your rotation here. So the rotation will be dependent on the original shapes local transformation. So that's why by rotating this on the X, because this original shape is actually vertical. So if I reset the rotation, it's vertical. So X is the rotation through the side here. So then what I can do is show this and increase the count like so. Then you can, of course, rotate the array as you would like. You've also got the scale and randomize here. One thing to just point out is uncheck realize instances because what this does is create new versions of this each time. So you can see I've got vertices of 27,000. If I check this one, I've got 797,000. And so I just want that unchecked and it frees up my viewport, makes everything run a bit smoother. Then we've got randomize. Randomize is just to offset it. So We've got randomize offset or location. So we can say every object can be randomized in the location, let's say Z, the Z axis, we can randomize it within a 0.2 degree radius. And so the more you randomize that, the more this starts to shift like so. Then you've got random rotation as well. You've got so you can adjust some of these if you would like, like so. And basically it's going to move, it's going to pick a random value within 34.5 degrees of it or whatever you set here. You've got random scale, uniform, and then you can also adjust each axis as you would like. So you might want the Z axis to be random scale, like so, and each one is a random size here. And then flipping, I'm not 100% sure what flipping is. But I think it flips the model itself. So it'll turn around the other way. And so you can, this is basically a factor of how many will be flipped. And then that's pretty much it. So then you can create quite a cool render. So if I just jump into my rendered view, I'll just set up the parameters. I'll turn off randomize. I'm just going to put this up here. You get into render mode and you can see here that I've created a nice uh, render like this. So you can move that back. Till it hits the side there then we can rotate this like so you could make it like um there you go sort of like dna but before we do that let me just tell you 
that if you want to learn how to use Blender for product rendering professionally, then you should grab our course, Master Product Visualization, which has over 3,000 plus students and will teach you everything you need to know from packaging to modeling to lighting and doing product animations inside of Blender. You'll learn all the tricks and tips while working with real world examples, allowing you to build your own portfolio. So by the end of the course, you'll be able to create your own professional renders that are the next level above everyone else. So go ahead and grab the course. The link is in the video description and in the pinned comment under the video. Let's jump back in. Let's move on to the circle here. So the circle array, I've got it set up as the curve. Let's jump back to circle here. Circle array here, let's jump into edit mode. So it's got a radius, so you can adjust the size of the circle, like so. And then you've got your count. You've got distance. Distance is just basically uh, how many degrees you want to go around a circle to add one. So if I said 45, it's going to add one every 45 degrees according to my circle. I can also adjust this in the center to increase or decrease the amount of duplications. Undo that. And then we can also say which axis we want to send it in the direction. We've got arc, which allows us to pick the size of the circle. So we can grab this circle here and adjust the ang sweep angle. So basically I can say I only want this to be 200 degrees around. And you can also hold down control when uh, doing this and this will snap in five degree increments for more precision. Then what we've got, let's quickly check something. Yep. Then you've got to pick the axes and this is the axes of the original shape. So you're aligning it by it. The rotation and so you can pick a different axis like this face it forward you could also scale the original shape so you can rotate the original shape if you wanted and then you've got your randomize which is the same the only other thing here i wanted to show you is you've got a curve modifier now which allows you to place it on a curve so you can see there i can place it along a curve and generate it along the curve. And so it works the same as everyone else. It's got a distance, so uh, we can say 0.5, every 0.5 meters, we wanna do that. We can say every two meters to space it out. This is a very big perfume bottle. And then pretty much the same settings as before. And then I just wanna show you the transform here. This one is quite cool. Uh, the transform allows us to actually select an object. So pretty much this is all the same as doing a line. You could get all the same settings. But if we go to line, see there you can pretty much get the same settings here. And so you can move it along there. But transform just allows us to do some extra cool things. And particularly if we have an object like this, which is an empty, we can attach it to the empty and then use the empty, which that's the wrong, is that the right one? I've got to check. We need to attach it to empty number two. All right, and so here we go. You can use the empty. So if I scale the empty here, my pens get bigger. I scale them down, they shrink. If I move them further away, like on the X, they get further away. Just gonna reset the scale. If I rotate this, it starts to rotate them, like so. And so now we can rotate them in a different direction. We can rotate them like this, so uh, on a different angle, and we can start to spin these. So imagine using this for animation, if you ever got the hang of it. You could definitely use this for some cool animations. Like if I do.
Something like that would be quite cool, wouldn't it? So what you do is you grab this, you press I, add a keyframe. In your keyframes here, drag it to where you want it. Then we rotate this. You can change the mode too if you wanted to. And then all you gotta do is press I again. And you've got your animation going, which I didn't rotate it very much. So let's press A, home, have a look at this. I think it's this one. And we're just going to scale it like this and watch it snap. And so we could create some really cool animations. Like you can imagine close up of this. with the animation. So that's actually rotating. You can actually rotate this as well. Lastly, you can use this for modeling. So if I turn this one off, I've built a cube here. And so this is just using an array. So let's uh, rebuild something similar. Turn this guy off. Add in a cube, let's turn this one off. We'll scale this guy down. And I'm just gonna grab like two edges here. Scale him S shift Z, so I exclude the Z axis. Then add my array like this. Then all I'm going to do is just not move it. So I change the offset to zero. And then we just add uh, rotation to this and you could just uh, create a circle circle one and then add the count so then with realized instances turned on you can actually hit merge and it will actually start to merge this together so when I add another modifier like a bevel I can come in here let's uh, divide this a few times I can come in and add a bevel onto this and I've got a customizable shape. So if I add, I can add stars to this like so. I can also come in here and randomize two of the values. So I can say random, randomize these two. And then we've got like a, almost a love heart. It's got like a random shape. And so, it's quite handy because this is a merged shape here. And so you could also randomize the Z here. And you're just starting to create a procedural way of modeling, like randomize the scale. You could randomize the scale just for the X and the Y axes here. And so this works quite well create unique shapes and I'll just show you one that I created before it's a cylinder so all this is if I turn off the array this is all it is it's just this model I created it's got a bevel on it you can array it around an empty or around itself and then I've joined it all together and then added a bevel on top and so you can see how you could create unique shapes super easy like this could almost be a bike chain or something like that and then you could make it follow a curve or some anything really so we could add in a curve right scale the curve up which maybe that's best to just do in edit mode scale that guy up grab this go array add it to the curve curve so we have here i'm going to change the alignment to the z and uh x then z like that what i've got to try and get it flat so if i think about it What's this got on it? 
that's flat so we want it to go along the y along the y axis and then flat like that all right that's good and then you would uh maybe add distance to it so you would just shift click the distance like so and this is rotated slightly so i'll just fix that that it's back in the center and you can see now we can create some really unique shapes here ready for us to model so it can also be used as a modeling tool all right if you have any video ideas drop them down below and if you enjoyed the video then make sure to subscribe and stick around for more videos like this one mostly on product rendering. All right, I'll see you in the next one.